Our corrugated steel decking has arrived, so the guys will be installing that on top of the steel beams. The guys start by just laying them into place without securing them. And that's an obviously easy process. They overlap on the, on the flap. Uh, however, when it comes to the areas where there's rebar sticking up through from the lower support columns, they have to cut an opening in the decking to fit over the top of that rebar. And then later they'll have to frame in the area below the beams and between the beams so the concrete will be contained as it runs down inside that hole and around the rebar. This looks like a fairly quick process when you're watching a time lapse. So here's an example of how long it takes in actual time. So the guys will continue cutting and fitting those until the entire platform is covered. So jumping ahead to when that's complete, they use these L-shaped pieces of rebar that are welded onto the steel beam below and onto the steel decking everywhere where the decking is in contact with the steel beam. So we end up with these rows of these little rebar pegs. This way when the concrete gets poured, it forms a single unit with the concrete, the steel decking, and the beams below. I should mention that the reason there's clay stains all over that metal is because we're in the rainy season right now and that's from the foot traffic. That'll all have to be cleaned off before the concrete's poured. The white posts that are just inside the wood framing are welded to the steel beams and the flat platform on top of those is the level of the finished concrete and that'll be where we weld on the uprights for the handrail. Next, the guys install the wire mesh reinforcement, and this is rolled out and then cut to fit around all the various objects that are sticking up through the floor. And everywhere there is a rebar peg, they will attach the mesh to that with a small piece of wire. I don't know for sure how many connection points that is, but uh, it would be several hundred, obviously. And they've finished installing the wood concrete forms around the entire perimeter. And we also have a, an additional concrete form that you can see that runs along the edge of those three rebar castillos. That's the concrete form for the drain that will protect the interior of the house from water being blown under the glass doors. The rains and winds get extremely heavy at times during the rainy season. And those drains in front of the door empty into the two uh, PVC tubes that you see, one on each end of that concrete form. Those tubes will continue up through the next floor and up onto the roof where it will capture all the rainwater coming off the roof. But uh, we'll have a more detailed video on that because it's quite an extensive water control system and it'll be more interesting when it's completed and you can see it functioning. So with all that done and all the concrete forms in place and secured, it looks like it's all ready to go and we're ready to bring in the concrete truck and pour the concrete. So now that we have a well-defined image of the floor. Let's take a look at what goes on top of it. We've got the garage area, the L-shaped entry hallway, the great room, the bedroom, bathroom, laundry room, and patio area. We've got the hanging balcony patio and the walkway around the edge, and that's it. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the concrete pour, and when that's completed, we'll have an earthquake-resistant, flood-resistant, flat-level platform on which to build a two-story house. So we'll see you in the next video.